I hate monopolies. Things in our life that we have to use and have no choice over. Monopoly the board game? Don't care for it. Look, if you want to own a car, that means a DMV. Watching TV at home used to mean dealing with cable companies. How about electricity? When you don't have options, you don't have to innovate or be competitive, and we as consumers lose. But there's some good news, as technology has a way of disrupting old, stale industries. I want to share a few ways I'm fighting back. Between my internet provider and my energy utility, I have some good news. I'm taking back some power. It's David vs. Goliath today. I'm Ricky, this to the Vision. Huge thanks to Franklin WH for partnering with us to make this episode. I'm going to spend most of this video talking about our energy company, but really quick, let's talk about internet. Another monopoly I'm fighting. We don't just live here. We run the entire company out of our home. That means if the internet or the electricity doesn't work, we can't make video. So it's mission critical. And earlier this year, I had a huge problem with my internet provider. We have a monopoly that runs cable internet to our house. And 10 years ago was pretty good, but fast forward 10 years in the age of Netflix, we have slow internet connections all the time. Luckily, we have technology to disrupt that monopoly. We have a couple of choices. We can get Starlink, bringing satellite internet to pretty much every corner of the planet. But what we did for 50 bucks a month, we got this T-Mobile home internet router. We stationed it outside, that way it beams out over the hill to get the best reception possible. We're running ethernet cable down into our ubiquity internet router system, and it can aggregate both our cable internet and our 5G internet. And as a result, we could bounce back and forth and keep our internet strong. So fighting back against your internet monopolies now, pretty easy and pretty affordable. And now you have some leverage when you give them a call and give them a piece of your mind. And that brings me to the most frustrating monopoly in my life, my energy utility. Let me share some numbers. In 25 months as I've lived here, I've paid $15,600 to my energy utility. I've had solar for the past six months. So if you remove that, on average, I was paying $740 a month for gas and electric. And if you're thinking that we just use a ton of energy, on average, we're using about 1150 kilowatt hours a month, which is well within the average of the typical American home. Now, if I paid the American average of 18 cents per kilowatt hour, I'd be paying just about $200 a month for electricity, but I'm paying $522 a month. And that means on average, we pay 42 cents per kilowatt hour of energy. But that's not even the worst part. What pushed me over the edge and made me decide to declare a war on my energy company was what happened in January of 2023. It was the coldest winter I can ever remember here in San Diego. I understand, yes, take the grain of salt. It was never freezing, but it was cold. And most homeowners here in California were running their heater way more often. In January, sdg &E mysteriously, in the coldest month, raised their gas prices from $2.30 a therm of natural gas to $5 per therm, resulting in a $613 gas bill for me and a total bill of $1,410. That's what rent should cost not your energy bills. I really put sd Genie on blast on Twitter and I wasn't alone. Magically, the very next month, prices returned to normal, but the damage was already done. So how on earth can us little Davids possibly compete with the Goliath that is the utility company? After all, they run these transmission lines. It's not like I have a choice. I can't go shopping around and pick another company. Here, we're stuck. Now, my friends in Texas will chime in and let us know that, yes, they do have choices for the generation component, but typically, depending on where you live, the generation is still handled by the company that runs the lines. But thanks to technology, it actually is possible to fight back. My dream in college was to have a fully net zero home, and that wasn't even an option back in 2006. But fast forward today with solar and batteries, it absolutely is. Let me start with my solar system. I have an 11 kilowatt solar system. Obviously, it all starts here. You got to produce energy. But in 2023, that's just not enough. And that's because the laws are changing to make it more and more difficult to sell that energy back to the grid for any kind of money. So the real goal should be to produce and store your energy. And unless you don't want power when the sun goes down, that means a battery. For my house, I went with the Franklin Home Power Setup. These are their batteries called A Power batteries, and I have three of them. And the reason why I love these batteries is, first of all, just 
Look at them. They are industrial grade, like military grade looking. Honestly, very impressive design and layout. It just feels like it's going to last. It has that build quality. And they are bigger than something like a Tesla Powerwall too. But there's a reason for that. These have lithium iron phosphate chemistry for the batteries. My favorite chemistry for home storage. They're a little bit bigger, right? As we can see, they're a little bit heavier, take up a little more space, but they will last way longer and they're way safer as well. And here on the side, you can see the charge indicator light, which is really cool and striking at night. It tells you exactly how much juice is in the batteries. But this military grade design doesn't just end with the chemistry of the batteries. Take the inverter, for example. Each A power battery can output five kilowatts. So if I had just one of them, I could put out five. But because I have three, I can put out 15 kilowatts of continuous power. That's enough to charge my EV at 10 kilowatts and run my air conditioner at four kilowatts and still have room left over. But what's really impressive is these have a 110 amp LRA rating, which means that it can boot up a four ton air conditioner even when the grid is down. And that's really impressive. That's what some batteries can't do. Again, very high end industrial grade. So for me, I could pretty much power my entire house even if the grid were to go down. And speaking of the grid going down, this battery system has a 16 millisecond response time. So when the grid does go down, it jumps in, disconnects the grid, and powers the batteries in 16 milliseconds. That's so fast, our computers aren't affected, nothing shuts down, it's really industry leading stuff. Another big reason why I chose Franklin is because they work directly with the SPAN smart panel, which I had already installed. That's a nice feature. And this is the A-gate. This is the brains of the operation. The grid runs into here. The batteries run into here. The span smart panel runs into here. That means that all central decision making happens right here. If the grid goes down, it can disconnect the grid, power the batteries up. That way there's no risk of charging the lines and hurting line workers, right? And it can detect the grid. And when the grid comes back, It'll wait, actually. I didn't know this, but it'll wait about 10 or 15 minutes and wait for the grid to stabilize because sometimes that sine wave can be a little sporadic or fluctuating. But as soon as the grid is stable, it'll kick back on and let the batteries charge back up. It does all that right here. And there's one more feature that I hadn't even considered. So what happens when the grid goes down, if you don't have batteries normally with a solar system, is the system says, hey, there's no grid and shuts down and goes into kind of a standby mode, right? Now, because I have batteries, that never happens. The batteries kick in and the solar keeps working. But what if the solar kicked on, I ran the batteries all the way to empty. The next morning, they wouldn't turn back on. Well, with Franklin, they thought of that too. They have a system called Black Start, which even when the batteries are run down, it will send a signal to the solar inverters and kind of wake them up around seven o'clock on the hour, eight o'clock, 9 a.m. And until they turn on to charge the system back up. So worst case scenario, for example, for us in the winter time, these batteries can't run our house all the way through the night just yet. I would probably need one more or maybe some more solar. But even if that happened, the power would go out for a couple of hours. And then as soon as the sun came up, it would start charging the batteries back up again, all automatically without any intervention from me. That is awesome. So why does all of this matter? Well, because unlike fighting your cable monopoly, which you can do for like 50 bucks and a 5G internet plan, the energy monopoly is probably the hardest in your life to kick. In the summertime, I produce enough energy, if we're careful, to charge the batteries all the way up and run my house all through the night. To my utility, it would be like I flipped off the circuit breakers and went on vacation. But in the winter, we can't quite do that. At least, not currently with how many panels that I have. In our best month, which was August, we produced 1,670 kilowatt hours of energy. But here in November and so far in December, we're gonna produce just around 1,000 kilowatt hours. And that's not gonna be quite enough for our needs. Our solar and batteries cost roughly $80,000. But we'll leave links to pricing and all the information that you need because all these things are gonna vary based on where you live. And unfortunately, even with that level of investment, we're still not 100% in the clear. Based on my calculations, if I really wanted to kick SDG to the curb and completely power my house, rain or shine, it would probably be a little more solar, maybe a battery more, and maybe an emergency generator, probably about 40 grand. So $120,000 all in to truly be off grid. In the process of making this video, I was pretty heated and I thought of SDG as the enemy. But as I'm doing the math now, I realize, okay, 
Maybe we're not enemies. Maybe we're brothers that fight a lot. <laughs> our utility is flawed and monopolies do suck. But our utility companies do allow us with no investment, zero dollars, to just hook into their lines and use all the electricity we need. All right, sdg &E, I take it back. We're not enemies. But at the same time, I am a bit of a control freak. And yes, I want to be energy independent. What makes it so difficult is cloudy weather. What if you have a week straight of rain and cloudy days and the solar can't charge your batteries back up? Well, you'd be kind of screwed. The only way to get around that would be to have so much extra battery storage, like 10 times as many as you need for those rare occasions when that comes up. One final feature that I really loved about the Franklin system is it can actually tie in to a generator, like a diesel or natural gas propane generator. So if I wanted to be 100% off grid, I would probably get a small generator that I hope to never use, but I could for those rare occasions. Let's talk a little about the settings of how this battery works. Obviously for me being a self-reliance kind of person, I have my Franklin home power system set to self-consumption, where the battery will charge on solar and power your home entirely as much as it can for as long as it can. But there's also a time of use where you can set the battery to only power your house during really expensive times of the day. For example, if you have time of use billing and you pay more money from 4 to 9 p.m., you can have the battery charge on solar and just stand by and then kick in and power your house during the most expensive times. That is probably the easiest way to save money. Or there is emergency backup mode that charges on sunshine or from the grid as fast as it can to save up energies. Because if you know there's a storm coming or a hurricane or something else, you put it into emergency mode, it'll charge the battery to 100% and just go to standby mode. As soon as the power is affected or the grid goes down, it'll jump in. And then there's a lot of really other cool settings, like there's a storm watch feature where it'll actually listen to broadcast from the weather services and prepare if the power goes down or it could potentially go down. And even though I'm in self-generation mode, meaning it powers my house as much as it can, I still have a 20% buffer, which for me is about eight kilowatt hours of power. I've had the Franklin home power system for about five months now, and it's just been amazing. In fact, I had five outages that I didn't even know about because of how well the system works. Two on August 3rd, one was 11 minutes and one was 12 minutes. I think these were maintenance related from our utility. Then one in October that lasted three minutes and one in November that lasted nine. Honestly, our worst outage though was before the batteries in November, 2022, when we lost power for eight hours and you never know when it might come back. And that's what drove me to get this system. If we were out without power for eight hours, I'm still paying the employees and we'd have no way to get work done. It's too disruptive to our lives. It's not that ever happened again. That's why we did this. In fact, these last five outages, I didn't even know they happened until I did the data for this video. Here's what those lights look like at night. How cool is that? And uh, see the steam come out of my mouth? It gets cold in San Diego, all right? It's winter. It does get a little bit chilly at night. Okay, right now, my entire house is running on batteries stored from sunshine earlier today. How cool is that, right? So if I were to go turn off the grid right now, nothing would happen because the batteries were already discharging. So you wouldn't notice anything. So let's change the mode to backup only. So now it's just set to backup only. And as soon as I did that, it's pulling from the grid. So let me change the mode again, cause it's preparing to just be ready in the event of, an, of a power outage. Now let's see what happens when we're in emergency backup mode. Right now, the batteries are on, okay? But the house is running on grid currently, all right? So I am gonna disconnect, you ready? I'm seeing, I'm checking for the lights and you know inside the garage those lights up there let's see how much of a flicker there is you ready okay one two three is that a little bit of a flicker maybe a little hair do you see much in there okay now the grid is off you can see here it, it tells you there's no grid and we are running the house from the batteries as i mentioned before the grid is off currently, but when I turn it back on, it won't just immediately switch back over. It'll wait and monitor and make sure everything's good. Let's see how that looks like right now. Here we go. Grid, ah, back on. Okay, while we wait for the grid to come back online, 
Let me share a couple of other things that I noticed about the battery. Now, if the power were to go out and the batteries were entirely full, the solar panels would be turned off. What it does is it waits for the battery to discharge to about 90% before taking incoming solar input. First thing I noticed. So when the batteries are full to prevent any overloading or overcharging, it doesn't take any more solar input until after it drops down about 90%. The second thing is really cool is we tested it out, ran the batteries all the way down, turn them back on, and yes, the solar panels fired up around 7 a.m. and started charging it back up again. This thing I have not thought about. Yes, I'm a data nerd, I've looked at the numbers and stuff, but this doesn't require any intervention at all. It just works. We've mentioned five power outages, testing, software updates, all this stuff, and it's just been bulletproof. We put about 10 minutes and the grid is re instated. So like we mentioned, that's a little safety feature. It does all that behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about it, but it will detect the grid and come back online in about 10 minutes. I'm on a mission to try to cover as much about batteries as I possibly can, right? I've tried different batteries. I've got a lot of experience and I'll continue to do so in the future. But this Franklin WH system is just so good and why I chose it for my house. Now, it hasn't been perfect. The one issue that we had related to the Franklin home power integration with my span panel. This was an early software build and there was a bug that required a technician to come out and fix it. But since that day, it has been flawless. The data between span and Franklin has been perfect and the batteries have just worked perfectly ever since. And did I mention we've been through a hurricane now? Words I never thought I would say. But yeah, monopolies, do suck. But we do have the technology today to give us a fighting chance. Ultimately, it comes down to you and your motivations. Is your goal self-reliance? Is it to save money? Do you live in an off-grid cabin where there is no grid? Well, you're in a golden age of batteries and solar, honestly. It's pretty amazing, and I think we have a lot to look forward to. As I mentioned, I'm about $80,000 into this project but you don't have to be as gung-ho as I am. You can start small. Get a three kilowatt solar system, one A-power battery from Franklin and an A-gate, and you can shave your bills dramatically and always have backup power. Honestly, in 2023 and beyond in 2024, the thing that's changed is the importance of batteries. All utilities are gonna stop crediting you for excess solar generation. So your best bet is to bank that locally in batteries that you can use in the evening. But when it comes to solar and batteries, my advice has always been the same. Going back to my one of my first YouTube videos in 2017, start small and never spend more money than you're comfortable with. Get a small system, add on to it, right? I have 11 kilowatts of solar and 40 kilowatt hours of Franklin home power energy storage. And maybe in 2024, I'll save up and add to it. Maybe I'll get one more battery and five more kilowatts of solar. I don't know. But these systems can be added on to, which is what's amazing about them. Researching this video, I was blown away at how different utilities and municipalities are about these things. In fact, there are some places where it is legally required that you stay on grid, meaning they don't just have a monopoly, but you are legally required to be their customer. You couldn't just say bye-bye, don't want you, and disconnect. That is just insane. But ultimately what it comes down to is there's so little control that we have. Our utility goes and tries to get rate hikes every year and seemingly always get their way. I don't know what I could possibly do, but I do know with home batteries and solar, I do have a fighting shot. And thanks to the AGA having everything feed into it, the data that you get on the dashboard here on the Franklin app is amazing. Look at this. I have my grid usage, the battery usage, the home usage, and solar input. Right now, 2.30 p.m., my solar has already dropped off to almost nothing, 1.3 kilowatt. And that's my problem living where I do in that hill. We lose sunlight very, very early on. And that means this battery is already starting to power my house and it has to do that until 7 a.m. the next day. And you even have some beautiful visualization of what the battery is doing. I did a little experiment, uh, as you can tell here, these big purple lines are because I told the battery to charge and be ready in the case of a uh, outage to see. And as you can see, it's pulling 15 kilowatt, which is five, 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 three batteries, five kilowatts, 15 kilowatts in total. And the solar is kicking on and you can just see how quickly it tapers off and how the battery is kicking in. So can we run through an entire night? What's really nice is you can really easily see. And let's go take a look. So here is December 10th, okay? And here's how much energy we used from the grid. As you can kind of see here, we 
made it all the way to about 2 a.m., 1.55 a.m. Then the battery went to that 20% reserve mode, and I ran on the grid until 7.40, at which point, I'm guessing, the solar generation kicked in. So that's what we're talking about. In the winter, right, we're in December, the shortest days, all I have is about a five-hour window that I can't power my house. And like we've mentioned, we have a ton of computers and servers and things that run 24 hours a day, which you might not have. But in the summertime, it's much better. We can actually power ourselves all the way through to the next day. Obviously, the one caveat would be storms. So to conclude, get yourself a battery. If you're thinking about getting a really big solar system, I would say consider scaling it back and adding a battery. At this point, it just makes a ton of sense. Plus, if you get solar, you don't have batteries and the power goes out for some period of time, you haven't really accomplished all that much. Batteries are just crucial. And I hope that explains why I went with Franklin for my needs. Installation was a breeze. My installer has been telling me that they're very popular lately. A lot of our neighbors are getting them installed and it makes sense. It's just a great product that I'm really happy with. The build quality and design, the software updates, it just gives me that confidence that this is a company worth investing in. So if you're curious about the Franklin Home Power System, you wanna learn more, we'll have links in the video's description. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. This mission to be net zero is multifaceted, like insulation in my house to lower heating and cooling costs. I'm also ditching gas appliances like clothes dryers, which I just did, and next up is my gas furnace and my gas water heater. Again, unless I want to be stuck with those sudden surcharges in the dead of winter, this is how I can control those costs. So this journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and I'm just getting started. And if you want to see more, come join us for the ride. All right, until next week, I'm Ricky Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.